So flawless of the new exotic mission, Avalon, which is located on the EDC. A solo flawless of that mission in under 30 minutes because there's three triumphs that are associated with this mission that I'm covering. Uh, obviously, to unlock the mission, you need to go to the Gulch, collect all the data packets, unlock it, go and meet the Harpy. Once you've met the Harpy, you don't need to meet the Harpy again. The mission then becomes on your director. You can then pick Normal or Legend. This video is going to focus on Normal, not Legend difficulty, because the triumphs that I'm on about do not need to be done on Legend. However, there are some Legend triumphs. But for the Solo Flawless, you don't need to Solo Flawless Legend for the triumphs. Not to say that I won't do it, I'm just saying that you can do that on normal that's why i'm doing it on normal first and i can f i can cover legend at a later time this is focusing on the standard so the modifier is consecrated ground you just get a walk on favors you don't need to think about it so the build and the weapons so if we just well first i'll look at weapons so exotic green launcher with a hard We've got Funnel Web, Avoid SMG, and Retrofit Escapade, Avoid Machine Gun. I never change any weapon. This is my bulk of it because we're using Avoid slash Strand setup. So I'll go on this viewer, this new page. It's really good. And I'll just go go through it here. Obviously, one super, Blade Fury. Rally Barricade, better than Towering for this. Um, this melee is the only one you have access. Shackle Grenade because Shackle Grenade... Uh, immobilizes enemies it's the best strand grenade in my opinion in the game right now um, use it it's top-notch it is um, so we're using sort of a shackle grenade setup aspects uh, there's only two aspects that you can have into the freight and drinkers lash the fragments are the big one this is what you need to focus so I've got fed of warding continuity generation and mind I'll just go through them so warding when you pick up an orb you get you gain resistance bonus damage bonus um, which you're going to pick, be picking up a lot of orbs so Fred of Warden is a big one in this if you for survivability I recommend you do it when you're using stranding end game activities you use Fred of Warden it's massive continuity in generation so both of these are going to give you your shackle grenade build generation is going to give you your shackle grenade back when you suspend enemies it's going to give you energy back continuity is going to make suspend effects and other effects last longer but i'm focusing on the suspend aspect of it so you're going to get more you're going to get more um your suspend is going to last longer and then fred of mind which is a gives you class ability energy when you suspend so you, you're going to get grenade energy and class ability energy which is really good because you can tie some mods to it which then we come to the mods so we've got on the helmet void siphon ashes to assets so void siphon is critical to the build because we've got void weapons so make sure you got void siphon on don't worry about ammo finders anymore because the game sort of changed a little bit and there's an asp there's an artifact mod i'm going to show that you must also unlock for this season you should always have it but i'll, I'll, I'll get to that in a minute so ashi to assets going to be really good in this for the gauntlets we're using exotic um simpseps which gives a buff to melee damage and super damage it's huge if you want to rock heart of most light with strand you can and it's really good but you don't have to use heart of most light anymore any any anymore because you can still get a lot of ability energy with strand anyways so i went with simpseps just purely for the super damage that you get perks void loader so that's going to work for both my energy and my heavy bolster and detonation i've got font of focus so when I'm charged with, uh, not charged with light, when I have an armor charge, I gain a bonus stat to my discipline, basically. Um, so that's a decent one to have on. I'll talk more about the armor charge thing. So we've got double charged up on the chest plate. So that gives us two extra stacks of armor charge, right? We Void resistance is the big, big one in this. Make sure you got that on. Um, as for... The next piece, so boots, Void Weapon Surge, Void Holster. So Void Weapon Surge is going to give us our damage bonus. So this is, think back to high NG fire. This is basically high NG fire. Well, it's more than high NG fire in, in terms of damage. But every time we've got our stacks our, our, of armor charge, we're going to get a bonus to our Void Weapons, which is why I'm using a Void Build. Void Holster is going to be really good as well for just uh, reloading your machine gun and stuff like that. Really good. 
Recuperation must have that on for the setup. When you generate orbs, you get health regen. It's massive in this. Uh, and then lastly for the class item, we've got double bomber on uh, and time dilation. So time dilation gives you, it reduces the decay of armor charge time. I believe it's 15 seconds per armor charge that you get. You'll see more of it in the run itself. Um, so yeah, that's basically what we're using. Put back up Mag in your retrofit because it's going to offer out more damage than boss spec because you're going to be able to shoot for longer with obviously the God Roll Craft. But yeah, a good Void weapon with this. Um, you can go Void Titan with Devour build, but I didn't want to because I felt that was boring and I wanted to use the new stuff uh, with the Strand. So as we start the mission, we'll jump down into the portal. One thing I forgot to mention at the start is that there's two artifact mods that you want to pick up. Volatile rounds for the artifact, where you pick up an orb, you get volatile rounds. And then beyond, on the beyond or something, I don't know what it's called, where you generate heavy ammo from getting void kills. It's huge, that one. So, well, void weapon kills. So there's a good chance that you're getting more heavy if you're using void weapons this season when you have that artifact unlocked. You don't need to equip it to your armor. All the artifact mods, once you select them, they are in, they're active in the background. The trade-off to that is, though, you can only pick 12. So you've got to be wise in what you choose and all that stuff. Um, just follow the route on screen and where you need to go. If this is the first time you're doing this, then you may get lost a little bit. So just watch a run first on the path because obviously you, need, you do need to play a little bit efficient to get the 30 minutes before the 30 minutes solo uh, for most players it's going to take close to 30 the better players 20 and less you know with, with certain strats and builds but it's not too bad to do uh, this mission you just as I say you need to have a good build on so this is the first section. This is going to show you or teach you what to do uh, for the final boss. So, you've got to defeat a couple of the Vex first. The pillar in the middle will open up. Then there's a code. So, you read it top to bottom. So, that's diamond two squares. So, you just shoot um, the corresponding ships. That's all you do. I think there's like a, a triangle type one. Which isn't in this. It's only the um, diamond and the squares that you use. You don't use the triangle ones. So yeah, it's a case of you don't need to do too much ad clear. For every access code that you do, so there's three. Once you complete one, sniper spawn two. If you don't clear those snipers, eventually there'll be four or six snipers. Right, if you leave them, so to clear them out. Now, because of volatile rounds and how it works, it will penetrate the um, snipers' immunity. Because snipers are barriers; they're essentially the they were they were originally created in you know in the original day one where they had that immunity. It's, that's where they got the idea for barrier champs. But, it, but volatile rounds penetrates the snipers. So if you've got volatile you can you can kill them quickly no need for arbalist is what I'm saying so yeah after every code that you put in make sure that you're taking out your snipers like look the immunity there the, sh the machine gun just shreds through that you'll have infinite ads, ads here so there's no point to keep t uh, t to go too far on ad clear here right uh, if you need to clear a couple of ads do so but just find a bit of cover and then they, they don't really push too much on this difficulty at the very least. The cords get longer and longer as you go on. So whatever you do though, don't shoot the wrong ship because that the, you'll have to restart that particular cord. Once 3 or 3 is done for the cords, you then need to melt ads at this point. So you know, use plenty of heavy because you're going to get a lot of heavy anyways. So don't be frightened just to spam a heavy. Funnel web's massive th this season just because of the volatile rounds. If you want to use the duality uh, SMG, which I know people that are a fan of, do so. Because it has some interest and perks and stuff like that. For me, I still prefer the old um, funnel web. It's a better archetype. It's a slightly better... Like, people do say, oh yeah, 
the duality one with adrenaline junkie and all that stuff. Yeah, so what? You're still getting your nade anyways, doesn't matter. Funnel web's a better archetype of an SMG, more reliable for me. That's what I prefer. But if you do want to use a different void SMG, you're welcome to do it. Alright, we're not here to debate about um, what's better. I'm here to, to, to show you how to do this run. So, the snipers, same thing. Take out the snipers before you start a code. You will get a respawn of minotaurs and goblins and stuff like that. But you just need to find a piece of cover, that's all. You can sometimes shoot two ships, if you're quick enough, uh, in one rotation. The thing is, if it's like two square that you need, then you won't get two squares spawn. That won't happen. So if it was a square and then a diamond, you can shoot that, that's fine. done that code there. Well, actually, we haven't done that code. We need to go and finish the rest. So we haven't fully completed it yet. So I need to just go back to see what the final bit was. Oh, I didn't quite catch it. Oh, no, we did, I think. No, we did finish that code. So two snipers, same thing. Code's longer this time, of course. Like I say, it's not too threatening. Um, make sure you're generating plenty of orbs with recuperation. Because even though we haven't got the Void Sentinel Devour build, which people are going to lean to in this because they're going to feel as though they can't survive, which you totally can survive in this. Maybe on Legend, the Void Sentinel's the better player. Probably. Because you, you, you're you generating orbs at a massive rate anyways. It's just so good just to put on the Devourers. So, yeah, on Legend Solo, definitely. On Normal, no. You can experiment a little bit. And Strand Super is insane. Um, especially Titan and Hunter, with them being Roman. The Warlock, the Warlock one is also still really good. Just think of it as what Nova Bomb is to Nova Warp. And it's really good, honestly. Uh, people have called the Warlock, said, oh, it's not that good. It's fantastic. It is, I've played it. Can't say it's not good, because it is. I know what's good and what's not, and it definitely is. The Strand Warlock's definitely a good build, with the Shackle, at the very least. Um, Titan, same thing, really good. Heart of Inmost Light, still really good, especially on Strand. Hunter, played a bit. I imagine Star Eater Skills being fantastic with the Roman Super. Strand's good, it's in a good spot. Definitely in a good spot. Clear out the final snipers. We'll, we were on the final code. After this, it's going to be the same again, where you need to do some ad clear. The difference is they're going to introduce some Rivens. So that's going to be where you want to spam supers, heavy, and stuff like that. So this is the final code. As I, like I say, it's a bit longer. You don't have to read it all in one as well. You can read half of the code, complete that half, right, and then go back over and quickly take a glance at what the rest is. So this is the main mechanic of this mission, right? There's this and there's another one that you're going to be doing on the first boss. There's actually two bosses, technically, uh, in in this in this mission, so it's a meaty sized mission. This to me is huge. This mission right now is such a good, well designed mission that I don't care that the campaign wasn't as good as people say it. That's fine with me. I'm not bothered. I'm bothered about missions like this. This is where the game is where 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 it, whether it's a success or not for me as a player. I know that everyone's different and some people are story centered and that's all they're bothered about. I'm not. We're playing a video game. We're wanting a good start. We're wanting a good gameplay. If I want a good story, I'll go and watch a movie. I'll go and watch a series. I'm not bothered. What I'm bothered about is gameplay. Always have been about games, always will be. The story needs to be somewhat engaging because you need to be investing in the characters, which we are anyways. You know, it's just because Lightfall was not that good of a campaign shouldn't mean that you quit the game just because of that. So what? Big deal. There's Raid to come. 
There's, there's all sorts of content to come. There's still the final shape. Why would you cap out now when we're literally at the end of the story of this saga? It makes no sense why people would just quit. I think people are lying about it. They're not actually quitting. They're just twining and complaining about it. So what? Campaign was still the second best campaign. Or maybe the third. We'd... Witch Queen being number one, probably Forsaken number two, and then this one number three. So it's still good. It's still better than Shadow Keep's campaign. You go back and play that one and see how bad it is compared to Lightfall. Lightfall's miles ahead of Shadow Keep. Beyond Light as well, it's miles ahead of that one. So honestly, I don't think you're that worse off. We're not that bad off in the campaign. Could have been a bit better, yes. But honestly, don't let that focus your entire thoughts of the expansion there's so much more content all the exotic weapons are good they're all interesting all the quests after quests are good so honestly it's still it's still really good this expansion i think so now with this section's just you get into the next part it's really good it's it's your jumping puzzle isn't it that's all it is um, if you're going for the flawless though, this is where there's a high chance of da of death if you don't know what you're doing or where you're going. So this one's a big jump. I recommend saving a couple of your melee charges. Obviously on the Titan you get three melee charges. Just in case you make the wrong jump and you need to sort of melee over there. Right? So keep all of your melee charges for this little bit just in case there's any mistakes. This little section here is like uh, the Whisper of the Worm where you start mission where you've got to wait for the blocks and they push you off sort of thing. So it goes in order. As soon as the block goes in, move forward like that and then wait for the block to come out. Straight forward that easy, of course. So take out the two harpies. You don't have to, whatever. Uh, and then we've got a place to put banner. I'm not. I don't put banner because you can see my heavy is good. I've got more than enough ammo. I don't need to put one on. But if you want to put a banner in, obviously you can. So this is the first boss fight I would consider uh, this to be the second main main encounter. So you'll have these harpies to take out first. The boss won't spawn in just yet. I'm making some orbs just to build up some armor charge. Because like I said, we're gonna get that surge going. Uh, and volatile rounds as well. So this is what this encounter is. It's gambit. It's prophecy type deal. You pick up moats to bank them. Which is... People aren't going to like it. I like it. <laughs> I kind of like it. This little section. Because it's frantic. It's timed. You need to pick up eight. Now, if you have more than eight, it has no bearing on the encounter. So the requirement is 8 only, and then you bank. Bank before 10 seconds. Now I've banked, what have I got? 15. Do you know why? Because I can't tell how many freaking moats I have, because there's so many lines of text on the left-hand side. I've got improved ability regen, I've got void weapon boost, I've got armor charge, I've got protected area, what's all this? I can't tell how many, how many stuff I've got. So I always end up banking more than what you need. It goes 8, 10, 12. The thing about it though is, say you bank 9 and you need 10 at 10 seconds, the Rivens collapse on you. That will be maybe a wipe and you might need to pop super to survive. So you need to be careful. I would always say overcommit to moats. It's a shame that if you, if you don't bank more, you then get further in the encounter. See, I would have liked it just to be Bank 40 moats in fa three phases. I would prefer that. Because then you could maybe do it in two instead of three or something like that. But it's not like that. You just need to meet the limit that it says. But like I say, it's difficult. The hardest thing is, how many moats have I picked? I don't know. I'm frantically picking them up. Once you get in the hole as well and you've banked, keep running around. Because the Rivens do void damage to you as you're in this hole. And there's like two seconds of them doing damage to you before the um, lid of the hole closes. So you, you need to be careful on that bit. Just run around. The boss spawns in. Look, notice my armor charge. I've still got the void surge. So I'm going to do with a horde and then just spam my machine gun as much as possible. The problem though is that Redrefit pushes the boss off the map. So luckily 
I'm going to get my damage in before the boss sort of falls off map. Because even if you knock the boss off, it's not going to automatically kill the boss or something stupid like that. The boss will respawn like so. So that's actually a fail safe to stop the encounter soft locking or something like that. But that there, because we had the armor charge, we do a massive damage with retrofit. That's stacking with your target lock and all that stuff. You'll get a bunch of harpies. Make sure you take out the orange bar uh, harpies on the podiums. Because once you clear out enough harpies, the next encounter starts. You've got to rinse and repeat what you've just done. But you don't want to leave harpies up because they're doing that constant void damage to you. So try and take out all the void harpies before the fanatics spawn. When the fanatics spawn, come into this little back wall here and they all come to you. Don't You don't need to run around the map. I've seen people like running around the map, nearly dying, getting sniped. You don't need to do all that. Just stand at this back wall. You barely get sniped there. And all the fanatics come into that localized zone. You pick up all your moats very easily. It's a, it's a good strat. I'll be using this strategy type thing, what I'm doing on Legend as well. So yeah, I've worked it out quickly on what you need to do. Because I actually didn't even play this mission on launch Tuesday, was it? So I didn't even I didn't even play it then, right? So once I've watched people's runs and done my own practice run, worked out all the strats straight away, quick. Because you've got to understand the environment that you're playing in and using the environment to your advantage. It's not just about builds. It is a but it is a lot about builds, to be honest. But it, that ain't the only thing. It's how you play it and it's your positioning. And that can't be taught. That can't be taught by using a build. That's taught by you play, te play testing that encounter. And that's what you need to understand that it isn't always just about the skill, but it's the knowledge side of it. And trying to make your life easier rather than harder. The recuperation is going to come in massive for this one because when you're multi-killing all those, those enemies with volatile rounds you're getting all those orbs generated right well as you're picking up the modes you're getting health regen from recuperation this is like mini devour this is like having devour without actually using devour on void titan that's what i'm saying you don't need the void titan you can still have fun with strand yeah and melt which technically the the strand soup is better than a void it, it just is better uh, than like Void Sentinel Shield in terms of when you do it for damage when you use it in this sense especially with Simpsteps look at the damage that we're doing now huge damage all enemies will despawn and then we can go through the portal I actually went through I thought I, bo I, thought I soft locked the encounter because we all know how bad checkpoints are in this game and if you go too quick it bugs it out but it didn't because it says enter the node car I thought maybe I'd come here too soon but it, that wasn't the case, so I was all right. Just be, just make sure you don't go through the portal too soon. And maybe I don't know if you do soft lock it or not, but I was worried that I did there. So now we're back to a jump maze type section. Jump down. There is a riven, but the riven's only red bar. We can shackle the riven if you're worried about it, which we'll do. That's what makes the shackle grenade too, so good. Just a brief thing about the shackle grenade and my thoughts on it. It is the most powerful grenade in the game for solo player against champions. Hands down. Literally, it's insane. You can stun Overload. Well, not in the traditional sense, but it does still suspend them. It stuns Unstoppables, definitely. And it stops barriers putting up barrier shields. Strand is superior to Stasis in every way. I know that Stasis is good now in terms of the supers, uh, in terms of build crafting on Stasis. It's a bit better than what it was, but Strand is still superior. I would still rather use Strand, Titan over Behemoth. Behemoth will be good, it has its place, but seriously, Strand is superior to it. It has more control, I think, unless we're talking about Warlock turret build, then for the most part, I mean, you've got Shackle. Shackle's just too good of a nade to pass up. So that's my thoughts. Strand's come out of the gate better than Stasis ever did. I uh, I didn't like Stasis when it first came out. I do now. But with Strand, Strand is superior. Uh, like in GMs and stuff, you just see how you just watch how good Strand's going to be for it because of the fragments and what you can do. So this is the final boss. 
The final boss has three flaws. It's showing you it now. This is Pyramidian. If anyone remembers the strike from 2017, I.O., it's Pyramidian, it's Brachion, which, for those that know, it's basically my favourite Destiny 2 strike. That and Savathun's song, those two. So this is very familiar to me. It, they've reskinned it, which is fine with me, honestly. It, it's, a, it's amazing. I, I like it. This mission I really like. I like this boss. So we're going to put up a barricade, uh, and then we're just going to spam Weaver Horde. Well, we're going to use Weaver Horde and then spam Machine Gun. Use as do as much damage as possible until the Rivens collapse. Then we'll re Weaver Horde up, use a super. Get a super in before the boss teleports, because the boss is on a timer and teleports between all three corners. That timer can be extended if you are close to the boss, because the boss will want to stomp you. So you do, you do massive damage when you're surrounded, obviously, with Bionic... Uh, uh, enhancements. So we are basically one site. We're doing all our damage and not ignoring the ads. I've ignored all the enemies. There's two Rivens on normal. It's not required for you to clear out every single ad. So I'm just showing you how you can just skip all these enemies. As long as you get your damage in like I did, then you're good. But I didn't have Void Surge, but I'm gonna have Void Surge, Void Surge on Phase Two because there's more opportunities for orbs and all that stuff. I could have started clearing out some of the ads, but didn't need to do that on phase one. On phase two, it's different. There's a better setup, and on phase three, there's a good setup as well. So you'll have two Rivens, a um, Hydra in mid, then there'll be two Cyclopses spawn. They spawn every time you um, start a fresh phase on t on phase two because on phase two there's a 30 second i think it's 30 seconds but i also think the time is bugging out and it's not showing me the timer where i've saw in other people's videos there's a 30 second timer and there is it is there it's just not shown on the left hand side for some reason so if you don't do enough damage a third in the 30 seconds you'll have to do another phase of the ships so this is showing you the mechanic. This is the mechanic from phase one, right? Introduced with some combat and the dump and the boss. The boss will continually snipe. I don't recommend that you have solar resist though. Just have void. Void's fine. On legend, you might need to sort of improvise a little bit, but for now, void is the biggest resistance one that you want because of all the harpies, literally, and the rivens. So Void is the biggest one. Plus you're going to have Woven Mill. Plus you're going to have Tier 10 Resil. So you're still going to be tanky. Alright. So this is what I'm doing here. Is I'm stacking charge, armor charge. So notice on the side. Right. So with three stacks. That's 15 seconds per stack that you get. Obviously time dilation helps with that. Um, so that there is us preparing for DPS phase. What you want to do though on the ship thing is shoot the last get to the final ship that you need to shoot so there for me was diamond then I pick up all my orbs I think I missed that last orb there use with a heart I just missed it that was a shame that actually um, messed it up a little bit I would have actually finished this boss off in a third if I had hit that with a hard shot you'll see the damage so we'll read with a heart up I need to reload get a barricade down get out of that void stuff the boss also does void then we'll just spam target lock. So if my damage was slightly better here, look, look the, the the timer there has come up now. So we were unlucky there. That that is the only part of the run where I like oh, I should have I could have improved it there, but it's just because I missed that initial weaver hard. So that means I've got to redo the shape thing again, essentially. I don't recommend using a super on phase two either. Um, just save one for phase three, or you can just wait. Or you can just spam uh, the harpies because the harpies keep respawning, so you could do that. I was I was planning on 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 getting a third damage with the machine gun, which just didn't happen because I missed that with a hard shot, and I had to reproc target lock twice. But you, I still get it done less than thirty minutes, so you can see it's once you know what you're doing, it's not a bad timer to hit even solo. It, it isn't. We'll take out the key targets like we did previously. Uh, and then I'm just going to rush this through because I don't need to farm super up. We've got four squares and a diamond. The puzzle uh, is 
favourable. I've got good RNG with that. So I'll shoot my four squares. I'll leave it till diamond. I won't shoot diamond. The reason being is because I'm going to do some armor charge farming. You need to get used to this new mod system. And I recommend that you do that before the, the new raid launches. Because you're going to want to understand what all the new stuff is. And it it's really surges. You need to understand... The surges on your boots uh, are on your boots, so you pretty much always have that on, yeah, for the most part, w when you want damage bonus, and that you also want some sort of charged up on your chest plate. It's always on the chest plate, and maybe even stacks on stacks. I didn't have that on the build, didn't need it because I, I had other things going on on the boots, but I'm still getting plenty. Of, I'm getting enough armor charges to ensure enough void weapon surge so that I do enough damage for when I want because on phase 3 we're going to skip the entire phase and melt him because I, you can and it's fun so that's what I end up doing so we'll shoot our last diamond we'll pick up our last orb here we've got um, our stacks of armor charge we'll get river horde in finish the boss to a third that then sends the boss to the next zone don't clear out any more targets. Wait for portal. Just avoid the Cyclops' blasts. We've still got armor charge, so we need to melt now. So we've a hard machine gun. Spam as much as possible until it's dangerous. Boss gets its head blown off. We're spamming. We'll go in with a melee first. Because Simpsons are just massive damage. Then pop super for damage resistance. And then just melt. This ensures that you basically melt him on the foul phase and you don't need to run around and play that game of hide and seek you just melt him with the super because of simperceps that's why i use simperceps you see and people will enjoy using this super because it melts it really does but that was a solo flawless under 30 minutes on avalon exotic mission hope you enjoy thank you